Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Maker's Workbench. I'm your host, Amazon Alexa. And in today's episode, we're going to learn how to use a Note and CU and a fork channel relay board in conjunction with me. So sit back and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and thanks again for joining me here at the Maker's Workbench. I'm your host, Charles, and I want to give another big shout-out to Alexa for that awesome intro. You guys really seemed to enjoy it last time, so I thought I would do it again for this video. So, as you can see, we have the demo board from the last video, except it's been reconfigured to house the separate components that made up the system before. So here we have a four-channel relay board that you can pick up on eBay or Amazon for, you know, a couple bucks. And I have a Note MCU 0.9, which features an ESP8266-12 module. Um, I think the Note MCUs retail for about 10 bucks as well. So what I'm going to do is a demo like last time. I'm going to ask the... Uh, so what I'm going to do is, similar to last time, I'm going to give the... Uh, the echo device a uh, few commands and it's going to turn on light one and light two and then outlet one and outlet two and i've also set up a couple home groups in the alexa app on my smartphone and that's just to kind of show you the how you can group some of these things together so to get started i'm going to turn off the overhead light here on my workbench because it kind of blows things out just a little bit echo turn on light one Okay. Echo, turn on light two. Okay. Echo, turn on outlet one. Okay. You'll notice the streamers on the green fan to the left moving. Echo, turn on outlet two. Okay. So now we're going to get into some of the home group stuff. Echo. Turn off all outlets. Okay. Echo, turn off all lights. Okay. Echo, turn on all lights. Okay. Echo, turn on all outlets. Okay. Echo, turn off all devices. Okay. Echo, turn on bedroom one. Okay. That turns on light one and outlet one. Echo, turn on living room. Okay. So that turns on light two and outlet two. Echo, turn off all devices. Okay. And finally, Echo, turn on all devices. Okay. Echo, turn off all devices. Okay. Okay, so that's it for the demo portion. I'm actually going to zoom you in here really quick and show you the 20 by 4 character LCD that I set up on this project for uh, debugging purposes. And it's just something cool that you can add to your project as well. Okay, so we're going to go through the uh, LCD here. And I'm going to just kind of show you what I've done. So I'm going to unplug the Node MCU and plug it back in. And then you'll see it run through a boot sequence. The first thing you're going to see it do is acknowledge that the Wi-Fi is connected. And then it's going to uh, display the SSID that it connected to. Um, once it's connected, it's going to run through kind of a fake little thing where it's polling the devices. Um, and this is going to set it up for our final screen. So it's polling the status. And this is just code, and it's reading through and reading the code right there. Um, then it's going to say system initialized, and it's ready for commands. And finally, we get a device status screen. This doesn't mean that it's actually looking for current flowing through the devices. That would be much safer, but that's a little more complicated than I wanted this video to be. So 
If I ask it to turn on light one, you'll see that it will change the state of light one to on. Echo, turn on light one. Okay. And the same thing with light two. Echo, turn on light two. Okay. And so on and so forth. Echo, turn on all outlets. Okay. Echo, turn all devices off. Okay. And you see it set everything to off. So now let's back away from this demonstration and take a look at the code. I'm using the same code from before with a few minor changes, but like before, you're going to need these five files before you can compile and upload your code to the device you're using. Those files are callback function.h, switch.cpp, switch.h, UPnP broadcast responder.cpp, and UPnP broadcast responder.h. You can get those files along with the main file we're going to be working with today at my GitHub, which can be found at a link in the description below. You can also get that link from the written post on my website, themakersworkbench.com. So let's move on and we're going to focus on the node MCU underscore Alexa underscore Wemos file. Um, and we're going to start here at the top. Um, if you're going to be using an I squared C LCD like uh, I did in my video, you need to include the wire.h library as well as the liquid crystal underscore i squared c dot h library and I'll include a link to where you can get that from in the description below as well. Um, if you're not going to worry about using an LCD screen then you don't have to worry about this or any of the other LCD code that I covered today. So the first thing we need to do is change our relay pins and around line 37 you'll find that section and for relay one I use the node MCU uh, GPIO pin 14 for relay two I use the GPIO pin 15 relay three uses pin 03 and relay four uses pin 01 note that these pin numbers are the actual GPIO numbers coming from the ESP8266 and not the numbers that are printed on the node MCU itself so you'll need to find a pin out to get those corresponding pin numbers um, if you're using an LCD like I did, you're going to want to find its uh, its address, and in my case that was 0x3f, um, and then I had to set things up as a four-line LCD with 20 characters per line. Um, now we're going to move around to line 48, and the uh, LCD does need to be initialized if you use it, and you'll do that with lcd.init, and then you can either turn the backlight on or turn the backlight off right here. I chose to turn it off then turn it back on just for added effect. Um, and then you'll need to tell the LCD to begin listening for instructions. And then it's set up as a 20 line 4 character LCD again. Um, so we come across the first uh, LCD code that I'm doing here and you'll see that um, if Wi-Fi is connected then I want to set the cursor to line zero or space zero line one and I want it to print Wi-Fi connected and then go down another line and print connected to and then I'm printing the SSID that I have it set up to connect to. This is all just for show it's not needed you don't need any of the LCD code today for any of this to work. Um, so the next part that's actual actually functional to the code or to the relays working happens around line 82 and we need to set those uh, pins to output so we're going to set pin uh, pin 14 to output, pin 15 to output, pin 03 to output, pin 01 to output and then I need to write all of those pins as high. Um, in the previous video we wrote we set all of them as low because the uh, link node R4 the way it worked was um, a low signal turned the relays off and a high signal turned them on. With this uh, relay set that I'm using, a high signal turns them off and a low signal turns them on. So just remember to get that set up if you're using a uh, relay board similar to the one I'm using today. Um, around line 93, we start the uh, post messages that I put in, so the polling device status. Um, of the smart devices and here you can see I just have it set to print out uh, light one off, light two off, outlet one off, outlet two off and then it will print system initialized um, and then print ready for commands and then it will go back through and list all of those outlets off as off and the lights as off and 
those will stay on the screen. So coming down into line 135, we'll hit our loop and uh, our main loop. And we'll come down to line 40, 147, and you'll see that I had to change the digital write relay 1 to low instead of high because, again, the relay set I'm using takes a low signal to turn the relays on. And then when I want to turn the relay back off, I set it to high. And I just repeated that for the other light and the two sockets or outlets, whatever you want to call them. Um, and that's pretty much it. E under each one, you'll see that I have a LCD.print statement, and that just you know changes that line to say on or off. So now that we've got the code covered, I just wanted to take a really brief look at the schematic, um, just for visual reference only. Um, if you head over to the link in the description below to the written post that accompanies this article, you'll see a point-to-point -point connection reference for how everything's wired up. So check that out, and that's going to wrap up things for this video. I'm going to let Alexa take us out, but I just wanted to say thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the like button on this video. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to check out the description below for the written article that accompanies this video and links to the parts used to build today's project. Thanks again and goodbye.